After months of speculation, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is expected to officially launch his campaign for president next week. The move will put him in direct competition against former President Donald Trump and already packed GOP field. So for more on this, let's bring in outnumbered co-host and former White House press secretary, the great Kaylee McEnany. Kaylee, good to see you. Um, so what do you make of this? Good to see you. Obviously, uh, uh, Ron DeSantis getting in the race. He is the number two to Donald Trump. Does he have the gusto to actually be a real uh, competitor to the former president? Oh, I, I think he certainly does. I mean, this is, I think, in the DeSantis team's view, I would guess, a, a three-person race between Joe Biden and Trump and Ron DeSantis. They would argue, you know, these are the people polling in double digits, um, and the only three at that. Um, it's going to be a long climb. I mean, you see, I think the last time I checked Real Clear Politics, President Trump was leading by 30 percentage points, a little more than that, actually. But the case I think the DeSantis team would make is we are looking at this state by state. We're looking at Iowa, where the governor got 37 legislative endorsements and Ted Cruz had 13 at the time that he won the state of Iowa. We're going state by state. But we'll see. We've got Tim Scott's announcement on Monday. Who knows what that will do? Um, and you have to consider these other candidates. Who are they taking from? Are they taking from the Trump base or the DeSantis base? And I would argue it's likely the second. Kaylee, he needs to come up with a broad-based economic agenda, and what he's going to have to stand on is what he's done in the state, particularly the fight he's picked with Walt Disney. And just today, Walt Disney announced that it's reversing course on a, a, a nearly $1 billion investment in a new corporate campus in Florida, and it's going to relocate more than 2,000 employees. And it's just from a, a hardcore conservative, it's not a good look. I think what you'll hear the governor say is, look, we are leading the way in unemployment, new business applications. As a state, I've proven I can make Florida an economic powerhouse. I can do this to the nation. We know President Trump will say, been there, done that. I made the country an economic powerhouse, and I have proof of it. But I think, I do believe Governor DeSantis is able to put this Disney fight in a very unique bucket if messaged the right way. Um, I can tell you, talking to my conservative friends who are mothers, they think picking a fight with companies that fought for legislation, that fought against legislation that took pornography out of K through three classrooms, they thought that's a fight worth picking, especially as we see corporate America embrace the trans agenda at the expense of our children in many cases. So if he packages it the right way, I think he can win there. But you're exactly right. It's threading a fine needle with the economic message as well. And on that point, I think Donald Trump is making a mistake with his super PAC running ads against Ron DeSantis on Disney, also running ads on uh, Ron DeSantis trying to fix Social Security and Medicare. I think that's a big mistake on the former president's part. But I want to pivot to you because, uh, with you because Senator Ted Cruz calling for an investigation into Bud Light's partnership with girlhood advocate Dylan Mulvaney. The Beer Institute is the industry regulatory body that, that regulates uh, beer sales. And, and in particular, what our letter focused on is their marketing agreement with Dil Dylan Mulvaney, aside from being foolish marketing, was also, I believe, clearly targeting children. And there's, there are strict constraints on the beer industry not to market to children. Kelly, what do you make of that? So Ted Cruz is basically saying uh, Bud Light, a beer who can't market to kids, is using Dylan Mulvaney uh, as a pathway to market their beer to kids who are under 21. This is brilliant on the part of Senator Cruz, absolutely brilliant. Because I spoke with both of you on your program about how in a lot of these cases, um, this isn't you know an individual going from a biological male saying I'm a biological woman. No, it's becoming a girl. And Dylan Mulvaney, uh, in his celebration of this Bud Light can, was celebrating one year of girlhood. And Ted Cruz points out there are certain standards, like you can only market to an audience where 73.6% are adults and TikTok is not that. TikTok is much, much lower than that metric. So it's really brilliant. I'd not thought of it myself. And uh, when I read this, I thought, wow, whoever came up with this, really smart. Mm -hmm. Kaylee, thank you so much. Always terrific to see you. Kaylee McEnany. Thank you, Kaylee. Thank you.